Bags with Horror Lies. Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you. I'm your Wednesday evening host here at Body Bags. It is week 379. December is upon us. It is random week. And I'm going to begin what I'm calling a month-long look at a few sort of horror, haunted, supernatural, related, boat out in the ocean type films. And this is the first up from 2018, a film some of you may be familiar with, simply entitled The Boat from Winston Ozzy Party. It stars only one real person, his son Joe. This is adapted from a, from a 25 minute short called Head, uh, or The Head, I think it's just Head. Um, it's an interesting film with some really intriguing cinematography. Uh, the guy knows his way around a yacht. Uh, it takes place in or around the Malta region. And uh, before I go much further, I guess I'll use that as a segue. Uh, my house is really super chaotic right now with a lot going on. Uh, plus the weather's crummy, so I can't just kick people out of the house and do what I normally do. So I found a much quieter place and with a little bit different of a background but i think it fits man because we're talking about the mediterranean region where this film takes place a place steeped in folklore greek mythology and i thought you know it'd be nice to have a map of the mediterranean right behind me which i'll point to here in a second malta of course right behind me is just underneath sicily which is just underneath italy up on the northern Part of Malta is where this film really takes place, just off the coastline. Um, and uh, again, Joe Aziel Party is the only actor, really. You see some other people in there, but he's the only one credited in this film. Um, in this film, as I said, man, it's steeped in some interesting, subjective things going on. Really, basically, what you have here. Uh, is a fisherman sailor who goes out in the morning, he's going to get into his boat, he's going to go out into the deep sea and do some early morning fishing, not too far off, but far enough to get something good, hopefully. Uh, the fog will come in, he'll get sort of lost, uh, a yacht will come along, he'll tie his boat up to the yacht, and then he'll uh, get aboard and see if anyone's in distress, anyone needs help, although he's sort of in, in need of help himself. But he finds the boat, the yacht, it's a 40-footer, uh, just deserted, no one on there. But there are traces that there were people on there. And so he begins a radio transmission to call for help. It gets absolutely nowhere. And there are a lot of things just sort of placed in the film to make you think about where is this director going? What is he trying to convey? What is the message? What Really, what type of story are we dealing with here? Are we dealing with... Uh, the uh, well, the Greek god Elias, who is the keeper of the winds, and this is the name of the yacht that this guy boards who finds deserted. Uh, the Elias, uh, and so is this a matter of a, of a traditional Greek god just messing with this guy's life? Is there somebody on the boat all the way through the film? You get these little things, these little nods that maybe there is someone on the boat messing with him. You hear footsteps, you hear doors close, and that kind of thing. He gets trapped several times once in the bathroom which is uh just all crazy as heck uh but then in the bedroom as well compartment area or whatever um, or is this simply a haunted yacht that's just you know sailing out there by itself in the ocean picking up people dropping them off whatever uh, just messing with them. And you see that in a little bit in this movie where uh, it's sort of a tug of war between the boat and him. It seems like where, you know, he starts to get really aggravated and the boat in turn starts to turn on him as he turns on it. And then when you get this point where he begins to do things that will ultimately help the boat when it's taken on seawater, he, uh, he rigs up a way to get the seawater out of there. It, it just seems like this tug you know, this took a war relationship uh that short-lived but there exists between him and the boat uh at one point uh another cruiser out there tanker of some sorts uh just comes along almost smashes them to pieces uh but there's no uh, call to them i mean it's almost like the boat doesn't even know that they're out there sitting on the water and so you know it's interesting and by the time you do finally get to the end 
of the film, you're sort of left at a weird place of sort of, what just happened? Now, it's, it's, it's kind of, there's, it's hard to say that there are, uh, you know, that there are spoilers in here at all because it's so stinking subjective. I don't think you really can say anything and ruin the film because it's, it's a matter of pointing a few things out. Uh, like, uh, you know, there's a point when he's in the bathroom, he opens up the medicine cabinet and there's like a streak of uh, blood as if someone's hand who was covered in blood had grabbed the, the inside of the medicine cabinet. Uh, he also gets himself trapped in another compartment area uh, when you and he finds a big giant buck knife or whatever that's also covered in blood. So I mean, what is what is this conveying that there is uh, that there potentially was a brutal crime committed on the boat, uh, and uh, and it's sort of haunted as a result. Who's the killer? Who's the family potentially? Who was the family that was on this yacht that got murdered? There's a mystery here. Uh, or is this a matter of, uh, by the end of the film, uh, we, you know, you find yourself sort of back where you started. Uh, is this a matter of foreshadowment? Did he see something out in his future uh, calamity? If he continues to go out into the ocean, something really bad is going to happen to him. Uh, so, I mean, you know, there's so many different ways. The Greek myth, uh, the mythology aspect, now I put up... Uh, my nice little poster here. This is uh, Procrustes, who is the wicked son of Poseidon, who stretched or amputated the limbs of travelers to force them to conform to the length of his bed. And on his belt, we find the word, the Greek word, isotis, or equality. And really, the root of this, philosophically, uh, is in the nature of democratic uh, politics, or how democracy really, truly acts. It's uh, in the nature of it, but he was the point here is his this uh, this son of Poseidon uh, really went far out of his way to mess with people's lives. He would literally just kidnap them, take them back to his place, and literally just cut them down to size so they were of equal portion. Uh, and so, is this a matter of the alias, the keeper of the winds, this Greek god? Is he just messing with this poor guy? Uh, this poor sailor, the whole entire film, is he just messing with his life? Uh, you never really given any clear answers. You're not really given much of an answer at all. But it's a great film to consider in the use of your imagination. It's almost kind of like in all the empty spaces and throughout, you can just kind of drop in what you want to drop in. And it is what it is. Uh, so it makes it a fascinating. Now this is this guy's first feature film. Uh, so there's something there that's interesting. I hope this guy has a career in front of him. I'd kind of like to see what maybe lies ahead. I would also really like to see uh, this short from which this film is adapted or springs from uh, head, a uh, 25-minute short film again. I would love to see somebody uh, you know, actually give this a decent release and maybe put that short film head on there as well so that we can maybe look at that and maybe just, I don't know if that would even fill in any gaps at all. So if anyone out there has actually seen that short film, man, drop a comment down below. Let me know what it's like. I'm curious what it's, I was kind of hoping to be up on YouTube, but it's not on YouTube. Uh, but I'm really curious to see what that film is like. Uh, so this, uh, this is a pretty intriguing film with a lot there to sort of nibble on. And uh, uh, in terms of the pacing, it's a little slow in some parts, but I mean, Nothing that really knocks you out of the film, man. It's pretty awesome. Uh, it's really, I, I really got a kick out of it, actually. And uh, my buddy Will uh, up in Quebec, uh, Bay of Blood podcast, uh, he, uh, he was pretty, uh, pretty jacked up that I was going to be looking at this film. So uh, I don't know what else I can say about it. I mean, the cinematography, again, is pretty awesome. The music uh, put to it is pretty awesome. It's got, it's pretty tense in areas. It's, uh, it's pretty slow, you know, it's a slow burn that really ultimately brings you a place in which you're left to decide for yourself what just happened. Uh, and since there are not really any spoilers, I really can't imagine anything's a really spoiler because the movie's so subjective. 
Drop things down, man. If you've seen this movie, man, Will, if you've watched the review, drop down what you think this is, man. I kind of like to think, man, maybe this is, uh, there was a brutal crime committed on the yacht. It's haunted as a result, and it's just out there, man, just just doing its thing. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of creepy like that. So anyways, in week 379, December opens. Oh, man, appreciate each and every single one of you. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, just... Uh, just continue to be plugged in each and every day. Of course, we have a new, or not new, but we have a different reviewer each and every day. Uh, of course, Glenn anchors down Monday, uh, and Chris, uh, Chris anchors down, uh, or Jason anchors down Tuesday. Chris comes in on Thursday. Uh, uh, Lonnie's got Friday, Abriel's got Saturday, and James Cox has got Sunday. Uh, I do know the order. It's just tired, long week. Um, but anyways, Check that. Check out each and every review, and uh, I do appreciate uh, the support that you guys give Body Bags. And uh, as we head on into December, uh, we got some cool things uh, in terms of the theme week, the label week that's coming up. I think we're looking at uh, uh, Vestron, and I'll be taking a look at David Cronenberg's Shivers. Uh, and so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of cool titles coming in next week. Uh, so, uh, man, as always, as always, hope you enjoyed the different background and uh, a little bit of a history lesson, and as always, as always, go freaking Bills! This is not a dream. Not a dream.